So in the last video, we were observing some coincidences, and they turn out to be absolute facts of algebra. First one is that if you've got a polynomial, p of x, with real coefficients, in other words, you know, no i's uh, in sight, then if this has a complex zero, the conjugate is also a zero. So this is what we call conjugate pairs. So if we have a nice polynomial, no i's in sight, and we have a complex zero, it turns out that whatever that complex number was, its conjugate must be a zero as well. That's simply stating what we were seeing before, that if we know 3i is a zero, and there's no i's in sight here, then minus 3i must be a zero as well. Same thing with the previous example. There are no i's in sight in this polynomial, and we had 3 plus 2i as a 0. Well, it must be the case that 3 minus 2i is a 0. So, this enables us to do some of the exercises here, like uh, problem 28. We're supposed to come up with a polynomial that satisfies the following conditions. It must have degree 3, and among the zeros, we must see that 2 and minus 2i appear. So degree 3, we have to have 2 as a 0 and 2 minus i as a 0. Well, if 2 minus i is a 0, then according to this conjugate pair theorem, it must be that 2 plus i is a 0 too. because 2 plus i is the conjugate of 2 minus i. All I did was I just switched the sign on the i. So, since every zero corresponds to a factor, I'm just going to write out the factors corresponding to each one. For 2, it's x minus 2. For 2 minus i, it's x minus parentheses 2 minus i. And for 2 plus i, the factor is 2 minus parentheses 2 plus i. It's always x minus the 0. That's the factor that corresponds to the 0. And this will be a degree 3 polynomial. Because if you add up the multiplicities, they're all multiplicity 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 will be degree 3. This is satisfactory for me as an answer. But the book, I believe, is going to go one step further, uh, just to be a pain, as it usually is. It's going to distribute all these things. Uh, you don't need to do that, but um, just for the sake of you know, you being able to check your answers, I'm going to step you through it. So uh, let's deal with the hardest ones first. Let's deal with these two complex numbers, factors here. 
So I'm going to have to foil all this out. I'm going to have to take x times x will be x squared. x times blah, 2 plus i, is just going to be uh, that minus parentheses 2 plus i times x. Now, minus parentheses 2 minus i times x. I just take what's in parentheses here, the i's in parentheses, I just take them as one thing. So it's going to be minus 2 minus i times x. And then I'm going to take the two i, the two you know, complex numbers, and just multiply them together. So 2 minus i times 2 plus i. So there's another foil I have to do. I have to foil out these two complex numbers. So, let's see, x minus 2 times, let's see, what do we have here? We have x squared minus 2x minus 2ix minus 2x plus uh, oh, no, there wasn't a 2ix, it was just ix, I'm sorry. Uh, so that's minus ix minus 2x plus ix, and then foiling this out. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2i minus 2i, and then minus i squared. So this is x minus 2, let's see, x squared. Minus 2x minus 2x is a minus 4x. Minus ix plus ix, these cancel. And then, let's see, plus 4 plus 2i minus 2i, those cancel. Minus i squared. i squared is minus 1. So we have x minus 2, let's see, then x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus a minus 1 is plus 1, x minus 2 times x squared minus 4x, 4 plus 1 is plus 5. <sighs> now one more distributing. x has to hit each of these three factors and minus 2 has to hit each of these three factors as well. So that's going to be x times x squared is x cubed, x times minus 4x is minus 4x squared, x times plus 5 is a plus 5x. So x multiplied each one of these three in the other set of parentheses. Now minus 2 in the left has to multiply each of the three things on the right and that's minus 2x squared plus 8x minus 10 and I can now just add these up in the way I've written it I can just add them up vertically because minus 4x squared minus 2x squared is minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 8x is plus 13x minus 10 now that was painful. But that, I believe, is how the book is going to be writing out their answers. But in your homework, you can simply write them out in a completely factored form. Because why am I going to grade this? I'm not even going to go through this. This is too painful. Just do this. It's much simpler. So, Complex conjugates can get us through some of the examples and show us a nice coincidence, a nice relationship that happens in polynomials. The other thing, the kind of crowning jewel, if you will, of college algebra is the fundamental theorem of algebra. And you can state the fundamental theorem in a number of ways. But I'm going to state it in the way that I was stating it in the previous video. 
namely that the degree of the polynomial is the number of zeros of the polynomial. Degree of a polynomial is equal to the number of complex zeros. So not just zeros, but zeros which can be complex numbers. If you expect the zeros to be real, you won't always get true equality. The degree may sometimes be larger. But if you allow yourself zeros which are complex numbers, you will get exactly the degree of the polynomial. But the only caveat here is that you have to take into account multiplicities. So remember multiplicities were Here, this corresponds to the root x equals 2, and it has multiple, nah, it's 2 and 2, and it has multiplicity 3. That's better. That way we're not confusing our 2s. This is going to be a degree 3 polynomial, and if you just count x equals 2 as 1, 0, well, degree 3, 1, 0, 3 is not 1. But if you count x equals 2 as if it's three separate zeros, then you have three zeros and a degree 3 polynomial. You get 3 equals 3. So allowing yourself complex numbers and counting the multiplicities as separate roots the number of zeros that you ha that the polynomial has will be exactly the degree of the polynomial